what we're going to do now is go into the next session, which has uh, Margaret Mitchell, MSP, in conversation with Craig Cathcart. Now, Margaret Mitchell um, began her career in, in teaching uh, before then uh, gaining a law degree and going on to becoming a Scottish Member of Parliament in 2003. Margaret is very much a champion of mediation. And, and last year, Margaret has introduced um, to, to the Scottish Parliament the Mediation Scotland Bill, which has now gone through its, um, its consultancy period, which uh, Scottish, uh, the, the Strathclyde University Mediation Clinic were very much part of. And We'd like her to be interviewed by Craig, Craig uh, Cathcart. And Craig, uh, also um, a lawyer, he is a lecturer at Queen Margaret University, uh, and he has a ba background in consumer protection. And Craig graduated MSc in mediation from Strathclyde University in 2014, has been very much a supporter of the Strathclyde University Mediation Clinic. Uh, since then. So, um, with no further ado, I hope uh, to pass you over to Craig. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Bill. I hope everyone can hear me. Maybe if I can see a few thumbs up from Charlie, Patrick, Andrew. Yeah, great. Plenty of thumbs. That, that's great. Fantastic. Good morning, colleagues. It's a real privilege to be part of this inaugural clinic conference and uh, a distinct privilege for me personally as well to uh, have this particular role in, in today's uh, wonderful agenda and that's interviewing um, Margaret Mitchell, MSP. Margaret, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, so, so Margaret, we, we, we don't have long, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll just get straight, uh, crack on straight with the questions. Um, the, the, the chat function is open, but just to say to colleagues on the, 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 the conference call this morning that um, we, we won't actually have the opportunity for Margaret to uh, directly answer any questions in the brief session that we have this morning. Um, but if Margaret is able to join us for later parts of, of the day, then there may be an opportunity for her to pick up and respond to any points. But that really just depends on um, Margaret's ongoing agenda and everything else that the conference uh, is, is dealing with throughout the day. So. Margaret, I, I wonder, first of all, if I could ask you, you just heard from Bill there, obviously, you know, you, you, know, you, you uh, ha, have law within your, your, your educational and professional background, uh, and, and yet you've had an interest in mediation for quite some time as well. And I wonder if you could maybe just sort of tell us a wee bit more about how that interest developed for you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Craig, and good morning, everyone. I've enjoyed the, the conference immensely so far. Um, it's been a bit of a, a journey, an evolution for me. Um, I was a GP, as you see, I did um, a law degree in law and legal practice, but I can't say that at that point, and I did it as a mature student, um, it really um, did penetrate, or I, I was aware of mediation as such. But as soon as I became an MSP, I... I was part of the Justice Committee and held the Justice Brief. And very early on there in 2003, there was a secession on um, alternate dispute resolution. And suffice to say, I got it immediately. I understood how that could um, help the impact on the courts, how it could be a preventative um, spend, how it could give a, a, a satisfactory res re um, result in, in any case. Um, so I understood that and I suppose as an MSP I went on with uh, looking at an interest on ADR. Now I have to say, and it's probably important to understand that, if you've got um, a busy brief, um, MSPs anyway have, have got casework, they've got committee work, they're, they're starting in, in the chamber um, at scratch speaking in debates of which they may previously have known nothing. So it's pretty hard really to run with something. I was aware of, for example, the arbitration bill. I was aware that Michael Forsyth had uh, a draft um, bill there ready to go before they were all wiped out in 1997. And then when um, 
devolution came along, then I kind of thought about that after that session. I became an, uh, an MSP, as I say, in 2003. Um, but the parliament um, actually did uh, legislate for that. So um, after that, I suppose the, the key thing was in 2010, just from the cross-party group and um, childhood sexual abuse, hearing about an Apologies Act and um, exactly how it could resolve something. At that point, it was through the, um, through the compass of survivors, how it could give them closure, how it would be acknowledgement, all of that. And it was Professor Miller, who was then the, um, the Commissioner for Human Rights, Scottish Commissioner for Human Rights, that told us about it. I think it was a British Columbian bill one page bill and I thought that's perfect now that was 2010 so in the new session of the parliament which was the third session 2011 I started looking at the apologies act and probably there was about a year working on that and this nice bill that I showed to the um to the bills team and said well this shouldn't be too difficult look one page uh, as you will all know then and um, the size of the bill doesn't necessarily re reflect its complexity and so it proved uh, with apologies so long story short and um, i i got the consultation out in 2012 and um four years later it became law uh, and i think that's important to understand it was a full four years to get that on the statute books and that is not unusual for a member's bill and um, so after that then to the next session of parliament would be um the 2016-2021 and i particularly wanted the dynamics in the um the dynamics in the parliament had changed my party were now um the main party so i knew that we would have uh, the opportunity of the very first time apart from when there were two justice committees which didn't work well at all instead of uh, helping the workload it generated more and um, that we had the convenership in that and there were certain things having been on the justice committee and held that brief for most of my parliamentary career that i really wanted to do and one of them was to look at alternate dispute resolution so we held a round table on that and um, Charlie took part in, in that and various people, mediators, um, uh, sheriffs, um, a whole round of people talked about um, alternate dispute resolution. We had two evidence sessions and then there was a report, I won't see you in court. Now, having an arbitration on the statute book, having um, apologies on the statute, but it seemed to me there was a very um, definite gap in the legislation and that was mediation. And given the, given the pressure on the Justice Committee, you're, you're, you're inundated with government bills. It's very hard to make space to, to have an inquiry, but I was absolutely adamant at the very beginning, having had the experience of the Justice Committee, that we wouldn't be merely a legislative machine for the government and that we would do our own inquiries. And, and this was one of them. The committee then was pressurised to move on, but I started to look and say, right, where do I start with this? And um, started to make inquiries about looking at mediation and at what level. And um, that was the start of it. I'll say more, but um, the first stop, I'll suffice to say, was Charlie and his, um, his clinic because um, I'll speak about that a little bit later. So that's my evolution into it. So it meant by 2016, and for the last five years, it's been pretty well full on um, trying to promote mediation, a mediation bill and mediation generally. Fantastic, Margaret. Thank you very much. And, and already you've given us a, a very, very valuable insight into the real politique of what, of what it actually takes to, to get any legislative initiative off the ground and, and some of the timescales that are involved. And I'm sure there's many labyrinthine uh, negotiations and, 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 and um, machinations that you, you, you've, you've had to navigate uh, over the course of these initiatives. Um, uh, you, you mentioned at least three things there, the uh, arbitration, the apologies and, and the mediation bill. Uh, and and it, almost implicit in, in, in these initiatives is a, a, um, perhaps the idea that there, there are issues with the current um, justice system or, or methods of accessing justice in Scottish society. Would you have any observations on that? 
Yeah, from from my political perspective, and, and by that I mean um, an MSP's uh, is perspective who's been involved with the Justice Committee with uh, only a slight break, really, um, when I thought I'd have political, local government, um, another interest, then um, what you saw was a predominance of uh, criminal legislation. So the vast majority of the legislation that we look at is criminal nature and there's usually at least one criminal justice and um, bill general speaking up and um, every session and um, it means that civil legislation is therefore um, squeezed a little bit I think there's a problem in the courts because self-evidently then there's far more criminal cases which that squeezes and delays civil um, civil cases but I think a key point here in the parliamentary uh, journey was the Gill report 2007 to 2009 where um, he was asked to look at, Lord Gill was asked to look at civil, uh, civil court review. He took two years to do it, he reported in 2009, it was a very wide ranging report and I have to tell you it's taken to 2018 and still up to 2021 and all the recommendations still haven't been implemented. I'm not quite sure why that's on, sorry about it. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I think that's a major problem, finding the parliamentary time to put in place these uh, regulations, these this legislation to scrutinise it, to do it, and it's got to be more or less a priority of the government unless the initiative comes from um, a committee, and we have done that in the Justice Committee with the defamation law that um, we looked at the, um, the legislation there, the draft legislation from the Law Commission, and made that a priority the government took it on. But in terms of our civil, um, stuff generally. This, the things that have made a difference in terms of mediation is without a doubt the secondary uh, legislation on simple um, civil procedure. There's also been court reform, there's also been things like um, access to justice issues dealt with through the civil litigation um, expenses and group proceedings, you know, so trying to balance the um, inequality that Charlie mentioned earlier when he talked about, you know, somebody that was very experienced in the um, system and perhaps had unlimited resources against someone who is uh, a first timer and has um, practically no limited resources. So I think the last thing I would talk about funding absolutely there. A government and politicians can agree it's a very good thing to do, but are they prepared to spend the money now up front to resolve the problem? And the question or the answer to that is generally no, they firefight, they fight immediate problems, and they don't um, invest in the longer term for a preventative spend that would have so many good outcomes. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And I, I, I wonder just on a, a more detailed point there in order, you know, to, to, to gain momentum for um, new ways of thinking a, a, about justice and dispute resolution, it, it requires buy in from a number of different constituencies and, and, and your bill seem to get very broad support across a, a number of from a number of areas of Scottish society, institutional and otherwise. Um, in, in the Parliament, I mean, I think your bill was explicitly um, endorsed by at least 54 of your colleagues across all parties. H how would you rate the general level of awareness of mediation uh, among the representatives in the Scottish Parliament? I would say very poor, unless they actually had um, reason themselves in a professional capacity before they came into the parliament unless they've been dealing with legislation where there's a clause about mediation and mediation is built into that legislation i would say um very poor and unfortunately if they are aware of it is probably in the uh, in in a kind of negative way in that um for sexual abuse then um the the stakeholders there have been very doing a good job from, from their point of view, obviously, um, but um, really saying mediation isn't appropriate um, where there's serious sexual assaults. And unfortunately then it's, it hasn't been so easy to tease out that from the legitimate uses of it in, you know, sorting mediation in family law, which again, Charlie talked on. And um, I have 
have managed to get an amendment into the Children's Scotland uh, Bill, which was all about, all about um, potentially um, difficult situations. That, that was probably one of the most contentious bits of family law, and I was dreading that legislation. It actually turned out to be very good, and there's now an amendment in there that puts a pilot in place for mediation up front. So, um, this is a problem I want to, to point out to, to everyone. Every new intake you get, every new session that starts, you're starting all over again. A, people don't know if they're being um, re-elected or they will be elected. B, a lot stand down. And, and this year um, is a phenomenal number from every party sitting down, uh, stepping down. So there's going to be a complete new intake. And... The, the knowledge that is there, even of the people that signed that um, my, my consultation, and I was very proactive going around that, and um, it wasn't like they were queuing up to sign it, I had to go explain it and do a lot of work in the background, so please take that on board, you can never um, rest on your laurels and you're only as far as you are in one session, and then the whole thing can change completely. Again, extremely valuable, wise insights from a, 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 an experienced parliamentarian such as yourself, Margaret. It's, it's tremendous for you to be able to share them with us this morning. I'm, I'm conscious of, of our time, so if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you two questions in one just to round off our session. Um, first of all, I, 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 we've heard from Charlie already about the clinic and you're familiar uh, with Strathclyde's clinic. It's be, it got honourable mention in your consultation document. How can the experience of the clinic, do you think, be, be used to, to advance the cause of mediation more widely in the civil justice system, do you think? And then secondly, maybe looking slightly further ahead, where would you see mediation in Scotland generally being in about five years' time? Okay, I'll try and be pretty succinct with this, but uh, as I say, my first stop after deciding I wanted to do mediation was to go and talk to Charlie. And from that, I, I, I realised that there was a win-win situation here with the, the Class Clyde Mediation Clinic, then practical experience for the students and a really good service um, for um, the general public, um, which got over the ability to pay and um, you know it was pro bono, it established a demand for this and successful outcomes and um, evidence there, which is very important um, to, to argue for a wider use of this kind of thing. It highlighted the discretion between sheriffs, some of them um, who are other members of the judiciary who were very clued into mediation, saw the benefits of it and used it right away, and others who didn't. Um, the fact it freed up court time um, should have been resonating and is resonating uh, because you're going away from the court, it's, uh, it's solved outside the court and um, it frees out court for everything else and most certainly a preventative spend. And a level playing field um, was possible, I think, by replicating what um, was done in Edinburgh, I know, and what Glasgow um, uh, University, uh, clinic was doing in seven courts, as Charlie just said, um, throughout the UK. So um, that really was where I wanted to start with the mediation bill. It would be access, it would be demonstrating the, um, the benefits from uh, mediation, and it would be establishing a level playing field of consistency. So in every sheriff court, in every court, it was available. How do you achieve that? Well, information meeting is absolutely essential and that there is somebody at the point A, and this is important, uh, the sheriffs make the referral and have that clearly on their agenda and I have to congratulate the Judicial Institute for taking forward work with the judiciary in um, just making the, the members uh, very much aware of mediation and its benefit and alternative dispute resolution. So uh, that's absolutely key. Moving forward, um, the, the bill therefore could demonstrate all these things, could be a platform at an uncontentional level because the, the small claims 
under 5,000, you know, that's not meaty stuff. That's not um, lucrative stuff for a lawyer. Sometimes it's very much a pain in the neck. So there would be no opposition there. It could have been put through if we'd had 100% agreement. We hadn't. Um, and also, to be perfectly honest, then I started at it in 2018 doing the background, giving myself a three year <laughs> uh, window. And I knew from the Apologies Bill, unless you had really people arguing for it and us all speaking with one voice, it wasn't going to get there. So, where do we go from here? First of all, I think I go back to Gil. And what he asked for all these years ago was first line um, advisors to be absolutely trained in mediation and um, alternate dispute generally and having that up front. We still aren't there yet. And I don't mean just solicitors. I mean, in every CAs, anywhere, in any kind of walk of life where there is going to be a dispute, there should be training for the people who are on the front line advising. And um, of course, it's got to be funded. The Gill report had said that um, there should be uh, the Scottish Government should um, provide free mediation service. Wouldn't that have been wonderful in every case? So pressures on law, um, on um, legal aid, uh, on the budget just now made that impossible. That's where I'd like to be. But on a more positive side, then there is absolutely no doubt, I think, as Patrick, and Patrick did a lot of work for me in the research for the invaluable work um, for the mediation bill. As he said at the beginning, we live in the worst of times, we live in the best of times, and what's come out of this pandemic is the courts have been forced into um, embracing technology and having the Zoom meetings. And um, way back in the Gill report, um, he was recommending more video conferencing then, that's where I think you need to, to push the button and grasp the moment. I hope that's been helpful. I, I think I can confidently speak on behalf of the conference, Margaret, to, to say that's been tremendously helpful and, and these wonderful insights you've given us are, 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 are so, so valuable. Uh, so, so, Margaret, thank you for that, but thank you also for being a, such a standard bearer for the cause of ADR and mediation uh, in Scotland. It's really valuable service and I think, again, on behalf of the conference, we're tremendously grateful to you for that. Thank you very much, Margaret Mitchell. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to listen in to your, your next thing. Unfortunately, I have to go um, after that. And I would love to have still been the convener of the Justice Committee. I decided Alex Salmond, which classed with it, or the government um, inquiry was more important. So it's proved, but it's also proved the most difficult and um, uh, just deluged with uh, work that um, committee I have ever been on or would ever wish to be on again. <laughs> I, I think you, you've definitely done your service, Margaret. Th th thank you once again. And uh, it, it'd be wonderful if you can join us for whatever uh, part of the day you, you're able to. Thank you once again.